Good day, students. So we're going to have a discussion right now for module four of our logic course. And today we're going to have a discussion of logical inference or logical reasoning. Again, our topic for today is logical inference or reasoning or logical reasoning. To start with, let us define first what reasoning is. It is the last and ultimate act of mind in the division of logic. If you can recall, the division of logic are, we have first the simple apprehension, the judgment, and the very least is the reasoning. But it is the highest act of the mind to be considered. It is also called as logical inference, which seeks to conform to the standards set by the propositions in order to establish a frame of logical reference to new ideas. In our previous discussion, we have tackled already proposition. Again, when we say proposition, it is a declarative statement. That is its minimum requirement in order for you to consider a statement that you have mentioned as proposition. So here now are the basic kinds of logical inference. We have the premise, which are or is the, the previously known judgment. You will always have two premises into one statement. And first is, and also we have here the conclusion, which is the new judgment basing on the premises that you have mentioned. Again, your premise can be one or premises can be two in order for you to create a conclusion. If you want to have a strong conclusion, you need to have two premises because those two premises will be the basis of your conclusion. There are two types of logical inference. We have the immediate logical inference and we have the mediate logical inference for this class sake we're going to focus more with the immediate logical inference immediate logical inference it is synonymous with the word direct or which proceeds directly from one proposition to another it is therefore a re-expression of the very truth that express from the original proposition. Again, we should take note of the term direct, synonymous, and the better definition is it's a re-expression of what you have mentioned before, of what you have mentioned in your premise. Okay, so now let us proceed to the kinds of immediate logical inference. We have the adaptive inference or the equivalence and the last one is the oppositional inference or the oppositional square of the proposition. We're going to focus for this class with the adaptive inference or the equivalence. When we say adaptive inference, it comes from the Latin word ducere, which means to lead, and the suffix Latin word ex, which means prom. From the nominal definition by etymology, this adaptive means to lead from. Okay. Therefore, a method of rendering the same fundamental truth transposed in a given proposition is the very meaning of adaptive inference. Again, it is a method of rendering same fundamental truth. You are re-expressing the fundamental truth based on the premise into your new premise or into your new conclusion. Okay. In this sense, it is therefore the judgment expressed that we express the truth given by the original proposition. For instance, let us set this as an example in the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. It says there, do unto others what you would have them to do unto you. This is the original proposition. Now, if you're going to make an adaptive inference, you're not going to change anything, but you're just going to re-express the thought being mentioned on this one. And we can safely say, therefore, 
don't do unto them what you don't want them to do unto you. It has same thought with the original verse that we have mentioned a while ago. So that is one form of adaptive inference or adaptive reasoning. And we're going now to proceed with the four kinds of adaptive inference. And later on, we're going to have it one by one. What's the difference of a conversion to a version to contraposition and finally to inversion? Again, these are the four kinds of adaptive inference. Now we're going to discuss the first kind of adaptive inference, which is conversion. It comes from the suffix Latin word cum, which means with, and an infinitive Latin word vertire, which means to turn. Therefore, it means to turn with. Conversion means to turn with. Okay, so in a logical adaptive inference, we can define it by saying it is a transposing or interchanging the subject and predicate without changing the quality of the proposition. Take note, when we deal with proposition, it has quantity and quality. Quantity deals with the uh, whether it is universal or particular. When we say quality, it deals with your copula. Again, quantity deals with your subject term. Quality deals with your uh, copula or your verb. So in this sense, it is defined that you're going to change your subject term and your predicate term. But you're not going to change your copula. Okay? So there are two methods of doing a conversion so we have the first thing that you need to do is transpose the subject and the predicate so you're going to change their position next is retain its quality meaning to say you're not going to change anything from the verb and lastly your subject becomes the predicate and your predicate will become your subject because you are transposing them take note again your copula will not change Okay, here are the types of conversion. We have simple conversion and partial conversion. So let us now dive into simple conversion first. This type of conversion is viable only from, from proposition A to proposition A, proposition I to proposition I, and proposition E to proposition E. Now, what do I mean with that? You can change proposition I to proposition I also in a conversion. But what you're going to do is change the subject into predicate and your predicate change into subject, but your copula will not change. As for example, from proposition I to I, we say some other graduate students are promoter or promoter of best education. When we say proposition I in the table, it means that I, it is particular affirmative, okay? So let us see if this is particular. Some, particular, subject term, some honor. Then affirmative, R, meaning it's not negative. So some honor graduate students are promoter of best education. Based on the rule, simple conversion, you're going to change the subject into the predicate, okay? So therefore some promoters so now our focus here is not the honor graduate anymore but the predicate which is the promoter some promoters of good education are honor graduate students okay honor graduate students here is your previous subject which becomes your predicate right now but your copula did not change it's still remain as an affirmative one as R. Again, some honor graduate students are promoter of best education. When we convert that or in a simple conversion, we can say, therefore, some promoters of good education are honor graduate student. 
Yes, okay. From proposition E to E. When we say proposition E, it is universal negative. Okay. No tamarau is a furious animal. Universal. Subject term is negative. Okay? The copula seems to be negative because this is no. Okay? Now, if we're going to make it into another form, conversion, simple conversion, we can say, therefore, no furious animal is a tamarau. So, your subject term before is tamarau, which will become your predicate here. And your uh, predicate here is animal or the furious animal, okay, which turned out to be, but your copula will not change. Okay. Now, next is from proposition A to A. When we say Mr. Kennedy is our math professor. Okay. The simple conversion to that one is therefore our math professor is Mr. Kennedy. Your predicate here is math professor which will eventually become your subject and your predicate here Mr. Kennedy was your previous subject before you have it into simple conversion. Okay? Again, the basic rule in simple conversion what you're going to do is make your subject into the predicate and your predicate into subject, but you will not change anything in your copula. So again, that is simple conversion. Now, let us proceed with partial conversion. When we say partial conversion, it happens when the original proposition or the antecedent of conversion which is converted, is transmuted from universal to particular. So, I mean to say you're going to change the quantity of your proposition here. Such propositions are from proposition A to proposition I and from proposition E to proposition O. Okay. Proposition A to I. Every duck is swan. Proposition A, meaning universal affirmative, Subject term, every duck, universal, your copula is positive. Every duck is one. So let us change that into I to make it partial. When we say proposition I, it is particular affirmative. So let us see. You will say, therefore, some swans are duck. Okay. So same rule again with conversion. When we say conversion, you make the subject into predicate. You make predicate into subject, but you will not change the copula. Now, in this sense, if in simple uh, conversion, what you're going to do is you just um, not change the quantity of the proposition. When we say partial, you need to change, but still following the basic rule. Okay. Now, instead of saying all in every because you're going to change that from universal to particular, you will now say sum. And swan here was your previous predicate. Again, in the rule of conversion, change the subject to predicate. Predicate to subject. Okay? The difference is, in simple, you just follow the plain rule. But in partial, you need to change the quantity of the proposition. Every duck is swan. This is again universal affirmative. But you're going to make it partial. So what you're going to do is particular affirmative. Some which in which will which becomes your signifier that this subject term is particular. Swans are duck. And your duck here was your previous um, subject term. Okay? Next we have proposition E to O. No mountains are hills. When we say proposition E, this one is universal negative. Universal term, no mountains. It's negative because it is a no. Okay? Even though you do not have the word not here. Okay. Change it into O, which means that is um, particular negative. So we will say, therefore, some hills. Your predicate will become the subject here. 
skills are not are not because it is o which means your um, particular negative mountains mountains your previous subject term okay so that is for partial conversion again when we say conversion as a recap you're going to make your subject into predicate and your predicate into subject you will not change anything on your birth okay now let us proceed with aversion it comes from the suffix latin word ob which means to and from the infinitive latin verb vertire which means to turn to Therefore, etymologically speaking, aversion means to turn to. But if we're going to define it as a logical adaptive inference, we can say that aversion happens when only the quality of the original proposition is transmuted without affecting its quantity. So it's total opposite of conversion. In conversion, what we did is to change uh, you're not going to change the quantity and you're not going to change the quality. They're, they're not really opposite at all. When we say aversion, what you're going to do is to change the quality, meaning to say you're not going to move the subject or the predicate, but you're going to change your copula. If that is positive, you're going to make it negative or affirmative to negative, negative to affirmative. Okay. There are three fundamental methods of doing aversion. First, retain the subject and its quantity from your previous proposition to your conclusion. Okay? Then transpose the quality of your copula from positive to negative or from negative to positive. Then change the original predicate to a contradictory or contrary term. Okay, by this time, your predicate will be the reciprocal. Your subject remain, your verb will change into another quality, and your predicate will be a contrary of your previous predicate. Okay, for example, proposition A to E, meaning A, universal affirmative, all squares are four-sided. Subject term, all squares. Okay, your copula here is R, so meaning to say it is positive. And your predicate here is four-sided figure. Again, what is being mentioned there, your subject remains. Your copula will change into negative. Then your predicate is going to be negative. So we will say here, therefore, no squares are four-sided figures. Okay. E means that is... Um, universal negative. Next, proposition E to A. E means universal negative. The papers are not block. Okay? Your subject term here is the papers. Or you can say all papers. Okay? So therefore, you will say all papers are white. So you're going to make your copula now as Positive. This is negative, you're going to make it positive. Next, proposition I, which is particular affirmative. To O, which means particular negative. Few men are strong. Okay, positive. Make it into negative. Few men are not weak. Okay, so you're just going to make it in negative. Copula will be negative. Your subject term will remain, but your predicate will become its contrary. The contrary of the word strong is weak. Okay? Next is proposition O to I. Particular negative to particular affirmative. Not all days are dark. Okay? This one is particular. So we're going to change that. You will say, therefore, some days are bright. Okay? So 
So now let us proceed with contraposition. It comes from the suffix Latin word conta or contra, which means against, and from the infinitive Latin verb ponere, which means to put against. In a logical adaptive inference, it is by transposing your subject and your predicate like in conversion and put the contradictory term of the original predicate like in aversion. Now, how does it work? So, let us have first the simple contraposition. Your subject will... What you're going to do is put the contradictory of the predicate. Let me say you're going to change it. The same with conversion. Your subject will become the predicate. Your predicate will become the subject. But you're going to put the contradictory for the subject okay, of the predicate. Then your copula will change from positive to negative and negative to positive. Then your predicate, you're going to put the original subject. Okay? So in conversion, you're going to um, put the subject to predicate and predicate to subject. But in this time, you're going to put the subject into predicate but put your subject as an original. But when you put your predicate into subject, make it a contradictory. Okay? Contraposition. It's a, it's a different position now. But same, your copula will change. Okay? So preposition A, which means universal affirmative. Every PUP professor is professional person. Okay, universal. Every PUP professor. Okay, your copula here is. So according to the rule, make your predicate as your new subject but make it negative and your copula will also change but your subject will remain as it is so we are safe to say therefore an professional person is not a PUP professor so here being professional person as your predicate once you transfer that as your subject it will become contrary and professional Professional and professional. Your copula is affirmative. Make it into negative. It's not. Okay. PUP professor is your subject. So, remain that as your subject. Okay. Next. Proposition E to I. Meaning universal negative to particular affirmative. So, we say some Philosophers are non-morons. Okay? So we are going to say, Therefore, some non-morons are not philosophers. So you change it, remain the philosopher here. Again, I think this is not proposition E. Some. This is proposition I. I. To I. Or to O. Okay. Some non-morons. Here are not philosophers okay proposition o to i many saints are non-italians by birth therefore many non-italians by birth are not saints okay you're going to change your subject into the predicate part and your predicate into subject. So that is for the partial contraposition or simple contraposition. Now let's have the complete contraposition. When we say complete contraposition, the subject is put as the contradictory of the predicate. Your copula now will not change. Then your predicate put the contradictory of the subject. Then we say once you put your subject as predicate, change it to the, its reciprocal. When you put your predicate as a subject, change it on its reciprocal but do not change your verb. Example, proposition A to A, universal particular or universal affirmative to universal affirmative. 
every PUP professor is a professional person. I think it should be A to E. Therefore, every unprofessional person, okay, uh, every unprofessional person here as your predicate is non PUP professor. Again, this is a correction for position A to proposition E. Okay. Next, proposition O to proposition I. Several overseas workers are not nurses. Therefore, several non-nurses are not non-overseas workers. Ah, it's the same. It's proposition O to O. And this one is also proposition A to A. Next is the last one, which is inversion. It comes from the suffix Latin word in, which means into or in, and from the infinitive Latin verb vertire, which means to put. Etymologically speaking, inversion means to put it into or in. In a logical deductive inference, it is by re-expressing the original proposition into a new proposition whereby the subject becomes the contradictory of the original subject. Okay. First, we have the simple inversion. Subject put the contradictory of the subject. Your copula will change. Your predicate will be original predicate. So we're not going to interchange places here. Subject will not be put into predicate, but subject will become the reciprocal of its of its own. Okay. So proposition A to O. Every PUP professor is professional. Subject term, every PUP professor. Again, according to that one, you're just going to change your subject into its reciprocal. Okay. So here, therefore, some non PUP professor O meaning to say it's particular okay are not professionals you change your uh, subject into its reciprocal and you make your copula into its negative because your copula according to this one will change okay proposition E to I no adult is an infant. E, meaning that's a universal negative to I, which means that is particular affirmative. Let us see if this is particular affirmative. Some non-adults, particular, affirmative are not infants. Okay. Because it's a double negation. That's why it is uh, affirmative. Non-adults, not. Okay. Baka medyo maligto po kayo. Next is, let's proceed to complete inversion. Here, the subject will become the contradictory of the subject. Your copula will not change. Then your predicate, you're going to put the contradictory of the predicate as well. Now, how to do that? Proposition A to I, meaning universal um, affirmative into particular affirmative. Every PUP professor is a professional. Change that. Therefore, some non-PUP professors are non-professional. This is particular affirmative because of the double negation. Are non. Okay. Proposition E to O. No musician is musically ignorant. Therefore, some non-musicians are not musically ignorant. And that's it for our logical inference. Again, we have four kinds of uh, logical inference under adaptive inference. We have the inversion, we have the conversion, we have the aversion and contraposition. So thank you very much for listening.